Barrel Craft Spirits is at it again. <laughs> this is the newest addition to the Barrel Craft Spirits portfolio. It's called Barrel Vantage, featuring aged casks from three different countries, Mizanura, French, and Toasted American Oak. It's hard not to be interested in any of these releases from Barrel because of releases like Dovetail and Seagrass, which was a huge favorite of mine personally. Let's see if this interesting mix of finishes is worth it on the mass and drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C from the Mass and Drum. Welcome back to the show. Now, from what I read, the process involved to make Vantage involves finishing each whiskey, uh, each whiskey component separately in oak barrels. Each whiskey was then combined according to a specific blending process. Barrelcraft Spirits does a great job blending a lot of funky different things sometimes. It'll be interesting to see how each of those components work together with the Mizanora, the French oak, and the Toasted American oak. But before we dive into each component, let's make a bourbon cocktail with today's sponsor, Shaker and Spoon. Oh, Shaker and Spoon sent me a new box. It's called Bring On The Bourbon. It's bourbon cocktail time. All right, so Shaker and Spoon is an amazing subscription service that I've been talking about for you know a couple months. It teaches you to make bar quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. Maybe you're looking at this and saying, oh, that looks kind of complicated. Well, luckily in the box, you get all these recipe cards that guide you through mixing, garnishing each cocktail, step-by-step -step in great detail, including the glassware you need, uh, different methods you're gonna be using, and even a glossary that explains any unfamiliar bartending terms. Anyone can make one of these high-end cocktails. I'm gonna make today something called the Choco Facto. So this is kind of like this chocolate bourbon coffee type cocktail. Let's do it. So I already have my bourbon in the shaker. It's time to add my chocolate syrup, which is right here. Pour that in. Then it says add three dashes of coffee bitters. That's right, all the coffee. One. Now I just gotta shake it a bit. Strain it into my glass. And then add these chili threads on top for like an extra added little touch. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Everybody needs to drink that right now. Chocolate, coffee, bourbon, three of my favorite things in one glass. All right, so I know you want this. So to recap, Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription service that will deliver these craft cocktails to you. Each box has three recipes with enough ingredients for 12 total cocktails, four from each recipe. Click the link below in the description and use the code Mash and Drum at checkout for $20 off your first box. That's right, 20 bucks off your first box. Now go get some of these fun cocktails. This thing is, this is the bee's knees right here. Cheers, guys. All right, so as I mentioned, Vantage is a blend of straight bourbons finished in three different types of virgin oak casks, Mizanora, French, and Toast American Oak. Each wood imparts a different flavor profile. This results in a whiskey the brand says focuses on the subtle flavors and their compounding profiles. So for those of you that may or may not know, Mizunora is a type of oak that's native to Japan. Some believe it's the world's most flavorful oak uh, because unlike white oak, Mizunora's branches and base are slimmer and twisted, reflecting a more complex cellular structure with fewer long straight planks fit for barrels. The actual wood itself is more porous, it gets waterlogged, and requires at least three years of drying time before it can be made into a cask, which makes Mizanora casks very expensive. Now, when it comes to French oak for the second finish, barrel manufacturers use two species of French oak usually to craft their barrels. These are the Quercus robure and Quercus sessiliflora. Though the trees grow primarily in central France, they can grow in most regions. Winemakers love French oak because of the mellow spices and chocolate notes it provides for wine. But as you know today, American whiskey producers love using French oak to bring out the spicy and peppery notes of a whiskey. French oak is normally super delicate, so much so that wood must be hand split rather than sawed. And the last component is toasted American oak. Toasted bourbon is probably one of the fastest growing, if not the most popular, I guess, finish that's uh, happening right now. So if charring the inside of a barrel is burning it, then toasting is more like baking it, developing flavor more gently rather than with intense force of just firing a bunch of, you know, flames into the bottom of a barrel. Pre-toasting the wood can better control the vanilla flavors, the color of the whiskey, 
and bring out notes of marshmallow, gingerbread, um, and some other really sweet notes. Charring and toasting aren't really mutually exclusive either. All right, so all those three together make Barrel Vantage. This was distilled in Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. From there, it was crafted and bottled in Kentucky at cast strength, 114.44 proof. It is available now at select retailers and online via their website at barrelbourbon.com for a suggested retail price of $89.99. So I bought this bottle myself through the online retailer. I figured, why not? I mean, I love seagrass so much. I'm a huge fan of Dovetail. Not so much for the Armida. I think it really just depends on your palate with so much going on. But let's see what happens with these three different finishes. Here we go. First thing that, that I noticed in this is how tropical it was. It actually came off like a, uh, like a well-aged Irish whiskey. There's pineapple. There's a slight coconut vibe going on. I do get like a rye quality in here too. There's some rye notes that I'm getting, almost like a mint and a maybe like a citrusy, like Christmas tree type vibe. I think more for me though is that, is that little bit of like a pineapple note. Maybe pineapple or mango, depending on who's smelling it. There's a lot, a lot of different stuff going on. Again, that rye spice, and I think I'm getting like a little bit of a bitter cocoa powder as well. So, kind of all over the place. Let's see how it is. Cheers, guys. As expected, there's a lot going on. All the wood components definitely give this, there's a lot of oak. You know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of oak going on in this uh, in this whiskey. There's a hint of spice. It's definitely sweet. Can need another sip of that. This gets into a really nice, there's a coffee note to it, which I really dig. You guys know I love coffee, so that coffee note. I'm not sure which cask that's coming from, but that coffee note is really strong for me. And the spice, it's like a spicy, like a Mexican chocolate coffee. Oh my gosh, that's pretty damn good. I think the more you sip it, the more delicate it gets. My first couple sips, there was a huge punch of, uh, of flavor here, but those flavors are starting to give way a little bit to the, to the oak tannin, a little bit of a dryness to it as well. This is actually the first time I'm trying this. I. I, this was already open. I poured out a glass last night. I was uh, I was nosing it. I didn't want to taste it quite yet, because uh, usually with you know a whiskey with all these finishes needs some time to just to get some air time and allow you know just some stuff to open up. I added a drop of water to it to see what it would do. It definitely opened up some flavors on the uh, on the nose, but man, it got too late. I, I didn't even freaking drink it. I totally forgot to sip the damn thing. So I'm sipping it now. More of the pineapple I get right at the mid palate, but it's mixed with like some really, some really intense like black pepper, black pepper flavors. The sweetness is there. I, I mean, again, I just, I wish it was almost more pronounced because there's a lot going on in here, but I just, I, I want more. Man, that's like the theme like this week. The Wilderness Trail that I reviewed, I wanted more. This one I think is giving me a little bit of the same thing. Yeah, I just think as the more you sip it, I think the wood takes over a little bit, all those different oak finishes. You get like these little hints of dark fruit though that kind of make itself to be known like probably all the way back on the back of the palate. Like little bits of, I don't know if that's like a black cherry or maybe even like a grapey note from the French oak. Man, it's this. This is one of those. This is going to be one of those ever-evolving whiskeys where it's every time I go back to it, it's probably going to change a little bit because every all the different finishes going on. It's like I have to just keep sipping it because every time I go back to it, there's something different. But the things that are most prevalent to me is the spice on the back end it has a really nice rye spice, a little bit of a dark fruit punch right on the very very uh, back end of it. But the front of the palate. I mean, you get a little bit of that espresso note that I said that I really loved, but I want some more of the of the sweetness to kind of balance all that out. It's there on the front of the tongue. It's there kind of mid palate, but I don't really get it to the very end. And then by that time, I'm getting all the spice. 
I'm getting all the, um, like a little bit of that dark fruit punch, maybe the pineapple, but I just, I want more. It's just, it comes off a little bit, again, it's just coming off a little bit soft for me. And maybe that's just my palate, you know, honestly. You know, I'm very fortunate to try a bunch of, you know, great whiskeys and all these different ones that have a lot of flavor. Um, so the ones that lack a little bit of flavor, I'm kind of sensitive to. Not that this lacks flavor by any means. It's just that I want more of it. Like every time I go back for a sip, it's like I'm having to search for more uh, of the sweetness that I want to balance out kind of the oakiness and some of like that cocoa powder flavor that I'm getting. I'm not gonna do a final breakdown on this, but I will say this. I think before anyone buys this bottle, you should try it first. Um, there's a lot going on. There's some different flavors here and there. I was not a fan of the barrel, uh, what was it, the New Year, the New Year whiskey. Did not like that one at all. Um, you know, barrel craft spirits for me can be very hit and miss, but for every like whiskey that I have from them or every blend that's like, eh, they'll come out with something like seagrass, which just completely blows me away. This is somewhere in the middle. I don't think it's a seagrass level, but I think this might be better than most of the other blends that I've had from Barrel Craft Spirits, just because of the different nuances that are going on. There's a lot of different flavors that I think any palate is gonna be able to pick up on this. If you like a little bit more of a delicate whiskey, I think it might be worth your time, but if you're looking for the flavor monster that was seagrass in this bottle, it kind of falls short. All right, guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this review for the Barrelcraft Spirits Vantage. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. Let me know down in the comments if you guys were interested in this one, just based on the different three cask finishes. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers, guys.